here we go. I'm going to show you how to make a hanging indention in Word. So, open a blank document. I should title this, How to Make a Hanging Indention. Right, okay. So, first, we want to make sure that our margins are set correctly. And then we'll get some email, which I should have turned off. And we go back here, and my font is set at 12 points. I would like to use Times New Roman as my uh, extremely readable, professor-approved font. So I need to put my name on this, and let's just say this is like my paper was six pages long. So I need to make this the seventh page. And I'm going to say insert page number. And I'm going to format it because I want to start at seven. And then we we'll click OK. Now this is on the wrong side, so you go over there with that. And now they're all the wrong font because Word defaults to make things different fonts in the header. So make that Times New Roman and make that Times New Roman. All right, we're going places. We've got a page number. So I'm going to close the header. And then all I need is the title. Works cited. It is never bibliography. It is always works cited. We're going to center justify that guy. Then we're going to, nope, you know what? I did that wrong. Watch me go back and fix it. Our works cited page wants to be two spaces. And let me just check my spacing. All right. Sometimes when you change things right here, the after gets a number or an auto in it, and then you get like a little extra bit of space. So make sure this is all set to zero. So you're good. So now when I hit enter, I get two spaces. I'm going to go back to left justified. And then I'm going to type in my totally unprepared for uh, work cited. All right, I'm just going to grab the thing that's on my desk. So here we go. Last name, comma, first name. Italics for the title. Go back and fix where I can't type. All right. This was published by... Man, I probably should have been prepared for this. Should be Vertigo. And it should be this year. And Vertigo is located. That's the thing I don't know. I'm terrible at this. Ha, ah, Burbank, California. No, sorry, it was 15. So, unfortunately, that entry didn't go long enough. So I'm going to make one up for the next entry. Um, let's say that...
this is my totally fake book title here just to make something that's longer than the line. Um, what Dickens didn't tell you. So let's say this was published in uh, London. No, you know what? Let's pretend this was edited by um, Oliver Twist. It was London Methuen, which is a real publisher, 1899. Cool. Print. I forgot the print here. Print. So, what this, so you see here the, because we have the left justified margin, it's not indenting right. So what happens if I were to go here and hit that, the whole thing moves over. If I were to go here and hit enter and then tab, then it will actually do it. But the thing is, if you change anything else in this page, and if you go back and like you're like, oh, well I got the title wrong. It's Charles Dickens. David Copperfield. So then you see it it messes up with the um, because you've hit enter and tab it messes up your entry. So what we use instead is called a hanging indention. So to make a hanging indention what you do go ahead and highlight your body text and then we're going to use these sliders right here. These are your friends. And what you do is you drag this bottom one. It kind of looks like an hourglass is the way I think about it. And you drag the bottom part of the hourglass over. And we want to go 0.5 inches. So they're on our ruler. And you have to be able to see your rulers, mind you. So in the view, you want to make sure you are looking at the ruler. So we drag that over, but it, you notice it drug everything because the top part came with it. So now... Let's drag the top part back here. And voila! Look at that. Um, it, this kind of controls the first line. This will control the left indent afterward. This, um, you can move this around, uh, but it usually stays with its friend. Uh, so that is how that works. So then, if I hit enter here, it takes me back to the left margin, and I type in, um, and I'm terrible at making up fake things on the spur of the moment. Let's see. Let me look at a book that's close by. All right. Uh, nope. And... Deadpool, no, sorry, classic Deadpool, by the way, this is not the best era of the Deadpool comics, volume three, uh, the Rob Lee Field era of comics are so horrifically ugly, but that's neither here nor there, that was published by Let's see. Um, it would have been Marvel. I don't know where Marvel's based. I think it's New York. New York. Man, I can't type this morning. My apologies. New York. Marvel. 2000. Well, it's probably like O2 or something. I'm not going to get up and go look at it. Um, oh man, yet again, we don't reach the second line. Okay, so I'm just going to insert some text here. But look, as it pushed everything down to the next line, it's maintaining the margin that you set up here because this sort of trumps everything that comes below it. So as you go on and enter your new um, entries, they'll maintain this format. And that, my friends, is a 
is how you do a hanging indention. So uh, if I have marked your annotated bibliographies that I'm returning in the next day uh, as you didn't do a hanging indention, this video will be very useful to you because you didn't do it and this is how you do. So go forth with knowledge. Knowledge is power.